how the royalties wear out. started so after high school I told y'all you know I ended it off with a living hell I made my life a living hell from about 19 to about 24 um you know at that time I was obedient but I've been disobedient all my life I never liked to follow the rules but every job I had I had favoritism from some manager a manager always loved me and never wanted to let me go. I, you know, was a good worker, but they never wanted to let me go because I was, I was, I was hell, y'all. This is my first time getting an apartment. I ain't know nothing about paying rent. I ain't know nothing about nothing. I, I actually left the house when I was supposed to learn all these things. So, at this point, I'm out here winging it. I asked my cousin. Could he co-signed for me because he needed someone to stay too. He co-signed for me. Moved in. Needless to say, about uh, two weeks in, he got on my damn nerves, and I wanted him to get up out of there. Um, um, that's when I realized I needed to stay by myself. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, some people just can't stay with other people. I'm one of those people. I need to stay alone. <laughs> So, kicked him out, um, and I started working at McDonald's. Worked at McDonald's for like two weeks. I was going to the club a lot, leave out the club, go to work. I'm talking about the club closed at five. I'm at work at six. That lasted for a little second. I'm paying on my rent, right? So, a couple of months, I couldn't pay the full rent. The lady told me, like, listen, just give me what you can. You know what I'm saying? And I'll work with you. She never said you would get evicted if you didn't give me the whole thing. Just, I'll work with you. Three months later, I had an eviction notice on my door. And I had to get the hell out. So I go to the leasing office, I'm like, bro, where my money? She gave me my money, though. <sighs> so, at 19, I got evicted out of my first apartment. They gave me my money back, and the money, it was about nine to like $1,200. <laughs> Cause remember, I'm just paying on it. So at this point, I'm, I feel like I'm balling. <laughs> so, I had another person that uh, was a friend at the time that told me I can go stay with her and her mom. I go stay with her and her mom, man. We, you know, me and her were following that because she was a little more responsible than me. Um, her mom wanted to teach me responsibility because she she knew I ain't know nothing. She left the house at 17, didn't know nothing. So she trying to teach me how to pay bills on time and make sure that, um, I, you know, keep my room clean and shit like that. When you leave your house, certain things leave you. You just like, bruh, I want to be bad. So, <laughs> that's what I was anyway. So, I, I'm at her house, you know, she teaching me all these qualities and things that I appreciate to today. I always had a cook meal. I was in a good place. So, I was going to the club a lot. You know, and this is actually when I started smoking. I was uh, introduced to cigarettes. I started smoking cigarettes. A lot of y'all don't know that I smoked cigarettes. One of the nastiest habits that I actually picked up and I was starting to smoke pack for pack. So, you know, I had to start finding ways to make money because my life was so up and down. It's been up and down for so long. Um, I found ways to make money. So I started buying cartons of cigarettes and selling um, selling cigarettes out the pack or selling the packs for $5. Somebody asked me, does it get you high? I said, no, they said, why are you smoking? That's when I quit. <laughs> 
after that, I actually met this other young lady. Um, I'm not going to disclose her name, but I met her when I was about 22. And she actually was not a lesbian. You know, my cousin kept telling me, try, try. I'm telling you, we got this thing where we, he'll say, $30. $30 means she a lesbian. And I kept trying her, and she kept denying me. I'm like, bro, I'm not the one. If you deny me once, I don't want you. I, I'm done. I don't have to talk to you no more. You know what I'm saying? So she denied me, denied me, denied me. And then she ended up giving me her number. So about two weeks later, you know what I'm saying? Pull up on her. I beat them cheeks the first day. Yeah, I'm going to tell her. <laughs> beat the cheeks. Not the first day. I beat the cheeks two weeks later. But I messed with her for like two years. Um, at the time, I needed somewhere to stay again. I had just started at Chipotle. I love Chipotle. Chipotle actually changed my life as well. Um, Chipotle was a really, really good job. I actually became a kitchen manager. I learned a lot of responsibilities. And you know, with her, she was helping with me with a lot of things. I was helping her with a lot of things. After I, I ended up moving in with her, that lesbian shit, I moved in with her. Me and her roommates was falling out, so we ended up leaving, and she came with me. She came with me to a co-worker's house who let me stay there. Life was all over the place, okay? Um, needless to say, she did not like uh, men. I mean, excuse me, she didn't like women. She wanted a man. So she ended up leaving that apartment. I ended up keeping it. So finally, I got my own apartment. It's like 24, you know what I'm saying? I got my own apartment and this apartment, I kept the apartment for five years. I didn't want to let the apartment go. I'm like, yo, this is the only thing I've had that I could hold on to, you know, and I don't want to let it go. <laughs> so I stayed there for years, bro. And, um, you know, finally I got a damn notice that I had to leave because they were gonna do renovations. They didn't even give me the option to stay. I don't know that what that was about. Maybe God was like, you need to go ahead and move somewhere else. You know? So my life wasn't always so crazy, but I definitely, organization, um, I, I lost a lot of what I was supposed to learn at 17 because I decided to leave the house. In the process of me staying in that apartment for the five years, that's when I started YouTube. And I started doing couples videos with my ex. I wanted to start doing YouTube because I watched that video with DK Forel, and I'm just like, yo, they dope. I, I wanna do this couples thing. Asked her, did she wanna do it? She was like, cool, whatever. I said, bet. We started doing couples videos, couples pranks, um, and it was a good time. You know, I honestly, at the time, um, she has such a bubbly personality and I wanted the world to see it, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like, you know, people shouldn't, people shouldn't hide that G that they are, you know what I'm saying? She was a hell of a hell of a entertainer. And I'm just like, yo, you look great on camera. You know what I'm saying? We should do it. So we ended up doing it, you know, and with any relationship and you have to do something together, it could cause issues. It was causing issues. And um, a lot of it was on my part. She was working at the time. I was working in the house, making the money, making my money in the house and she was working a job. That's how I was working at the time for us to pay the bills. And um, as soon as she come in the house, I'm ready to do a video. Like, hey, what's up, let's do a video. It was no, like, hey, I miss you. Hey, I love you. How was work? None of that. Let's do a video. And after a while, it was like, all right, bro, damn. You know what I'm saying? Like. Can I wash my ass first? You know what I'm saying? Like, can I change my clothes? And I didn't understand that because I'm sitting here. 
I'm waiting. I'm waiting on you all day. And um, not even caring about what kind of day you had. I just want to get to videos because I had a vision with it. You know what I'm saying? And um, it was a lot of pressure from me uh, to just do videos, you know? Um, and it just became too much. Like, damn, bro, all we doing is, is business and no relationship at that point. So, after that and, and, and trying to work it out or whatever, I ended up doing reaction videos. I actually separated it and said that I was making a new channel called Neek G the Host. I did. And I started doing reactions and videos over there. When I started that, other people were missing me on the couple's channel. I also missing her. So I'm like, there's no point in us throwing the channel away. Let's change the channel's name. So if I decide to make a video, they won't be like, where is she, where is she, where is she? You know what I'm saying? That was the only intention I had on doing so. So I ended up changing the channel name to Royalty's World. And after doing that, I started doing reactions and, you know, people were feeling it. Some people were, some people weren't. And I was just having so many ups and downs with Royalty's World. A, changing the channel name. B, us not doing pranks. C, us not doing certain things. We're not getting along because I have so much pressure on her because of my dream. You know what I'm saying? So, after that, um, I made another channel called Royal Reacts. When I started doing Royal Reacts, you know, I was getting a lot of views. I, I started with Clarence and Queen. That's when they first started. I was getting hella views and I realized that you can't get paid. So I'm doing all these videos. You can't get paid. This is my only way of income. Also, don't ever, ever, ever get on YouTube for money. It takes, when you, when you start doing something for money, that takes your quality away. So my quality left when I started doing that. You know, so I want to do this for money. I I'm doing videos on this channel. I can't get paid till a certain amount of time. So I went back to Royalty's World doing the reactions. Spicy management hit me up. After Spicy management hit me up, you know, she said, "Listen, you got a certain amount of time to come up here because Queen about to blow up. So what? Uh, what you gonna do?" After I left from New York, numbers went up. All my Instagram numbers went up, YouTube numbers went up, everything went up. And 